So the other day I looked into what it would take to get this addressable LED strip to work using your Raspberry Pi. And by work, uh, I mean that, or well, the way that these addressable LED strips can be used is that each individual LED has a red, a blue, and a green LED, and the brightness of each color can be set for each LED. Now that's a lot of control, and you can make some very interesting, um, d beautiful displays, like having a a um, rainbow wave travel down and move and, and spin and swirl and stuff like that. So the great thing is um, Adafruit, a company that makes like hobby electronics um, boards and stuff, they made a library or like a device driver for using this type of LED, which is sometimes called a NeoPixel um, on a Raspberry Pi. And so I have installed the NeoPixel Adafruit library and using it is pretty simple. I'll show you the code, but let me just show you the NeoPixel uh, Wave demo. Pretty neat, huh? So you can watch the red, it's sort of, all the colors are sort of tantalizing, but see as the red starts and travels around and then comes back. So each color is doing that. The blue starts here and it travels around, the green starts and travels around, but they're all uh, offset from each other a little bit. So like the green is always ahead of the blue and the blue is always ahead of the green and, and such and such. Um, it's. I'll show you what the code is. Let me just stop that. You can see that the LEDs froze to their uh, last commanded color, um, but they didn't turn off. That's just the way the LEDs work. Um, every time they receive a command, they uh, set the colors that they were told to go to, and then they stay that way. So let's take a look at... Um, it's called neopixelwave.py. It's a little Python script. And this is actually the entire Python script, so pretty easy. First, we import board and neopixel. These are the Adafruit libraries for controlling the neopixels. Um, the, I have 60 LEDs, and we use that information when we create a neopixel object. And we actually want to tell it's auto write equals false. What that means is later on, whenever we set the colors of the pixels, we want to wait until we've set all 60 colors before sending the command. What that means is, um, well, I, I think that the default behavior is each time you set a color in the code, it would automatically update the LED strip to reflect that change. So if I said turn LED 3 blue, then it would immediately turn blue. Well, we want that um, with auto write false, you'll say set 3 to blue, set 4 to green, set 5 to red, set 6 to blue, whatever, set all your stuff, and then all at once send 60 commands down the chain and update the entire LED strip um, in one go and that is a lot faster um, so then what we do is we use the sign function to create a sine wave in the colors and we actually do that once for red once for green and once for blue offsetting the green by about 120 degrees or one third and offsetting the blue by two thirds um, and then we this pixels dot show is the command that takes all the information we've loaded to each pixel and actually applies that 
and then we just loop that over and over um, and that is pretty much all it is so you can see that the library is pretty easy to use um, and I think Adafruit did a good job on writing their NeoPixel libraries. Uh, you found that interesting and useful and um, definitely would, if you have a Raspberry Pi, recommend trying to hook up an LED strip. It's a nice thing to, say, put up on your desk for just for fun display or whatever. So have fun with it. Thanks for watching.